In this video, I'll be showing you my 2000 Toyota Hilux dual cab 4x4, what I've done to it and what I would still like to do. I'm Nick from Namibia and you're watching 54 Ten Africa. In the front I've got a replacement bumper by Boss Bumper in South Africa. I've got the Ella Comet Spotlights which came with the vehicle. I'm considering changing them to something smaller, possibly a LED light bar. And what I would still like to do is add a winch, probably a 9,000 pound with the synthetic rope, obviously, just to reduce the weight a bit. Then I would like to put on clear lenses and go LED and do the grill. I'm going to do that probably a matte or a satin black. And that's the front. Standard 2.7 Hilux engine, 250,000 Ks. Um, not much, snorkel fitted. Except for bad wiring that I'm slowly changing, there's not much, not much that I'm going to change. There's no chip, no mod, no nothing. For me, overlanding, I do it at 180 to 110, 10 max. There's no need for me to. I don't need to go at 140. I don't need extra power. I've driven on the beach. I've driven a bit of off-road. There's more than enough, more than enough power to get me through that. If I don't, I deflate tires. I put it in I4, if I don't I put it in low 4, if low 4 doesn't work I put on the diff lock, if the diff lock doesn't work I get the max track, there's no problems, no problems, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to do extreme, extreme off-roading, I'll be using the better African roads and yeah, I mean this, all of that is just, just in case, in those few situations where I need it, so hopefully it, hopefully it works out well. For tires, I have fitted the General Tire, General Grabber X3 Mud Terrains, size 31, 10 and a half, R15. I love the tire, I love its performance. I think it's perfect for the gravel that we drive in Namibia, especially with the sharp stones, rocks, etc. The size is probably the biggest I can go for this truck without any other modifications. And the only issue I have with the Mud Terrains, except for a bit of noise, which I don't mind, is that they're extremely heavy. The all-terrain alternatives that I'm looking at is about 5 kgs less per tire. So that's uh, something to consider, especially when it comes to fuel consumption. It also has the old-school ablocks to go into 4x4, but that a safari snorkel, that's obviously to take in cleaner, cooler air, especially with uh, all the gravel and the dust we have on our roads, also for those occasional river crossings. <laughs> Running boards came with the vehicle. I just took them off and had them refurbished and sprayed black. I will probably eventually put on um, proper rock sliders. That's, that's a safe bet. Window tent came with the vehicle, very useful. The cab inside is much cooler and safety. If people can't see inside, they're less likely want to break in. Awning, this is a budget awning that I got from a company in Johannesburg, Awning Val Galore, Johannesburg. What I like about it, except for the price point, is that it only weighs four kgs. When I heard, <laughs> when they told me it's four kgs, I said, put it on. It's basic, but it works. I've, I'm able to put it up myself, put it back myself, provide shade, it handles the wind okay. I'm up with the awning. And then the roof rack came with the vehicle, it's a no-name brand. I just had it removed, refurbished, sprayed black, so I'm happy. The only other thing on the side of the vehicle is the pipe and filter for the reserve or extra fuel tank. It's a gravity feed onto my main fuel tank. That is a bit of a vulnerable spot for rocks on gravel, probably as well for theft. Now we get to the fun part, the back. The back, on the back, second spare wheel. I was lucky that the vehicle already came with this. And this is my Bry grid. In the movie we Bry a lot. Bry is barbecue. 
and I often put my rubbish in here rear, bo uh, rear bumper rear bar work already done when I got the vehicle so that's quite useful much better is it exit angle entry exit exit angle I'll call it that rear hitch came with the vehicle obviously this I can take out and put in a rear a hitch receiver for recovery okay let's open let's open this up let's open this up canopy black aluminium canopy made locally in Namibia by Oryx Oryx aluminium canopies proudly Namibian obviously this provides extra storage but also safe storage because it locks it locks as simple as that let's open this up it's very easy to open easy access from the sides easy access from the sides this is the little dust cover because we drive a lot of gravel in Namibia it helps to prevent dust from coming in and accumulating inside your canopy let's open this up it's still a bit messy this is where I still need to do most of the work it's in the back but it's okay it doesn't look too bad from the side I've got my gray national lunar battery box with my second battery connected to obviously to the front battery and this will discharge it this charges it but also allows me to run additional uh, accessory of accessories off of it now I've got some LED light strips that I'll show you I've got an extra light that I sometimes use that plugs in here and I can run the fridge from here I'll show you the fridge is actually in the cab the plan is to eventually to run to run wiring to the cab in the front but we'll get to the fridge and then I've got the front runner drawers I took the small narrow ones I think these are the cheapest ones you get all of this build is budget as much as possible practicality and budget weight those are the three guidelines I use practicality budget weight I've got a basic little gas stove one plate that's fitted in here with the disposable canisters and then I've got three more ammo boxes coffee station very important that you can make coffee on the go on the fly it takes me less than five minutes to open this up and these two are for food I think that's about it then the bin is rubberized you won't be able to see this just for protection and then there's the extra fuel tank stainless steel like I said gravity fed into the just open a little tap into the main tank this was fitted customized and fitted for me by Edelstahl Blau in Vintuk. if you need any stainless steel aluminium work done just contact them excellent job it fits snugly it's a snugly fit I love the way it fits then I've got one two three ammo boxes on the side that one on the side it's got extra spares fan belts a second jack a tire extra tire lever all kinds of small spares and stuff that I might need on the road the one in front of that one has got some cleaning products and this is my daily use I just whatever I use a lot so I'll smack in here this is my foldable bucket broom so my gloves are in here as well for when I pitch my tent and stuff etc you will notice that there's no rooftop tent I use this bucky or to travel into overland but I'm not a dedicated overlander let me just say that from now because probably eventually eventually people will bring it up I camp I sleep in backpackers I sleep in guest houses Airbnbs I sleep in five-star hotels I sleep where I want to I sleep where the travel takes me I sleep with friends and family so yeah for me because of that reason one that's the one of the reasons main reasons is that's why I don't have a rooftop tent because I'm not a dedicated camper many many alternative accommodation options and part of the trip is showing that to people so but I did end up getting a tent go tent go ground tent the Savannah Savannah 3 and this one is 2.1 by 2.1 it's just big enough to fit my green sport stretcher and onto my stretcher goes my rollable 
think this is a bush tech, if I remember correctly. Bush tech rollable mattress. All of that takes me about five minutes to put up, which I'm happy with. The annoying part is breaking it all back up, but that doesn't take more than 10 minutes. So I'm happy with the setup. Also, all of this together, plus my, including my sleeping bag, weighs less than 15, less than one five kgs. So there's a lot of weight saved there, a lot of weight. Then I've got my table. It's a foldable plastic table. It's quite big. It's, uh, I think it ends up being 1.8 meters. Reason being so I've got one side for cooking or whatever and the other side for my laptop and camera and equipment and stuff to work. So I've got that, that cool little divide going. Then I've got this cool little Lumino. I think it's called Lumino. Lumino light strips. I fitted them actually. It's battery on. Yep, there we go. I've got one on this side, one on this side. They were actually done on whilst I was on this trip, you know, on the fly. So it's not, it's not, uh, it's not the best wiring and stuff, but it works and it's safe. And I will, I will probably uh, tidy that up once I got some some off time. On this side, I've got my Green Sport compressor. I've got my recovery bag with all my uh, straps and shackles and stuff that I would need. And my fishing tackle is in another box there. And then finally on that side, I've got a small box of extra fluids. Not for me, for the car. <laughs> the brake fluid, steering fluid, etc. And my poiki. Poiki, I'm not gonna take that out. If you know what a poiki is, then you know. <laughs> if you don't. I'm sorry, Google it, Google it. I think that's pretty much the setup in the back. What I want to do is put a slide in on the top so that the table slides in and on this canvas bag, so on an additional small bag, I will fit my little front runner foldable chair. These chairs are amazing. They're a bit heavy, but they're sturdy, they're strong. They fold up to this size, which is pretty amazing and if they break you simply take them back and either it's covered by the warranty or you just get it fixed I mean, the other plastic chairs if they break you have to chuck them out so that's the back that's a basic quick review of the back still a lot of work what i also want to do is to replace this with an aluminium top and that will include two boxes so the ammo boxes will come out one two boxes with covers that i can access from the side a box for the battery and on that side another box which will place that ammo box just let me know what you think uh, any ideas what am i doing wrong what should i be doing differently i would love that there's people with a lot of experience in doing this for many many years if not decades so yeah please input i beg you i beg you let's move on to the undercarriage i've got my first first spare wheel that's where that's where it should be or that's factory fitted first spare wheel and then i've got if you'll see on the diff there this specific model has the rear diff locker which i'm so happy about i mean i'm a solo traveler so my options are four wheel drive four high if i get stuck four low if i get stuck diff lock if i get stuck if i'm still stuck max tracks and shovel those are your options when you travel alone. So it's just each backs the next one up, if you, if you get what I mean. So yeah, very, very happy about the rear diff lock. I've got the Bullstein shocks all around. No suspension work yet. That will be the last. I will be doing the suspension, but that will be the last thing. The last uh, modification that I do. Once I'm happy with everything, the shocks will come out, new suspension. I still haven't decided what, what I'm going to do. Obviously, I don't have to go too overboard because one, I'm watching my weight. <laughs> I'm a weight watcher. And two, I'm going to drive Africa, but I'm not going to purposely look or search out the worst roads. I'm going to use as much as the infrastructure that's available. It's only for those occasions where I need to go off-road, you know. And even then, I'm not going to risk it. I'm, I'm traveling all by myself. Why would I risk it? So yeah, so it doesn't have to be an extreme. But if you guys have any suggestions, 20-year-old Toyota Hilux, what would you suggest? Which brand? 
there are so many i mean the options are so so many it's difficult to decide which ones to go with. so that's definitely something i would need some help on if you guys want to recommend or suggest a brand of suspension i would love that and that's the undercarriage okay so this is the top of the roof as you can see on the canopy there's nothing the plan is to put two times solar panels connected to the national lunar battery box and i've got power hopefully hopefully an endless supply of power when i'm off the grid here i've got my fishing rod holder yes i fish and i can't wait to fish all over africa max tracks and the shovel as i explained earlier that's an insurance policy if you solo travel you need you need to do as much as possible to cover yourself that's also why i'm getting the winch insurance policy i only have two they're expensive <laughs> so yeah i only have one set we'll see maybe in the future i'll get another one but that's the roof that's the setup on the roof as you've seen i've gone basic and again i'm going to go back to the principle of weight i don't want weight on top of my roof fish doop doop that's i think it's four is it four kgs is it per track or per set four kgs so say maybe nine ten eleven 15 kgs two panels how much is two panels and that's the total weight on my roof and i'm super super happy with that and that's everything on the roof first and biggest thing i've done is i've removed the back seat not the entire seat only the rear backrest and i've put my fridge in here i've got the snowmaster traveler series 42 liter love it for me myself one person it's more than enough it's either the fridge or freeze it doesn't have dual compartments but happy with that why i chose this one price point free bag free little monitor that tells you the temperature inside as well as the battery status of the battery which is pretty awesome and and when you open it you will see that at night there's a light inside which is so useful and it's a pretty bright light so useful for camping so yeah, this is why i opted for this one when I do drive around, I actually strap it in. I need to get a proper, I know, I need to get a proper securing arrangement for this. Then I've got the front runner 40 liter footwell tank. So it runs all the way across. Nice wasted space that's been utilized. 40 liters of water. And I've, all I've done is, because I could not find the proper front runner hose connection in Vintuk, I took some garden hose, cut it off, and I've got the garden hose fitting in the front. Works 100%. Then I've got these, I also keep my sleeping bag and pillows in here. Got these cool canvas pouches, permanently fixed uh, to the back of the vehicle, which is pretty useful. I've got in them, I've got my fire extinguisher, my first jack, my second jack is in the back, a uh, tire lever, everything I would need to, to put on a spare wheel. And I've got some other accessories. On that side, I've got my toiletry bag and that's pretty much it some spares and tools basic stuff that you, you might need just for quick quick uh, quick fixes along the way and on the other side this is my cupboard <laughs> my clothes go in here there's my shoes and there's my towel like i said toiletry bag and the canvas bag in the back and that's pretty much the back the other reason i chose to put the fridge in the cab weight distribution I've got 40 liters of water, probably when loaded a 35 kg fridge and a 65 liter fuel tank. All in the middle in front of the rear wheel, which I have for weight distribution, I think it's perfect. Front is pretty much pretty stock standard still. I've got these cool little pouches on the back, on the dash. Uh, travel guides, first aid kit, headlamp, cell phone charger. This is where my cell phone goes when I'm driving. So some, uh, a little bit of hands-free. This is my filing. There's a map of Itosha where I'm, I'm currently in Itosha. That is Itosha Pan, by the way. My camera bag where I keep my camera equipment. Additional camera box. More camera gear and small little attachments and stuff. Window cleaner. You always need to keep your window clean. My big old fluffy wide brim camouflaged hat original aircon that still works 20 years on cup holders 
radio with a USB that I can use for charging. I currently run the fridge off here. Uh, my safe where I keep my valuable possessions like TP, two rolls of TP, <laughs> white gold as we call it. On this side, the diff lock activation, the spare switch that I need to use. <laughs> it actually comes out. And tire pressure monitor, because you don't want to run your tires flat for too long because you mess them up. And finally, for a bit of security, I've got the emergency signal. This is for wild animals when I camp. It's quite noisy. So will we do it? No, no, we're in a game park. I'm not going to do it. Uh, pepper spray for humans. That's a nuisance. And in here I've got my sharp knife, pressure gauge and a flashlight. It's got my wallet. And that's it. Obviously, you, as overlanders, you know, you try and keep things, everything has its place and you try and keep things as organized but inside the canopy inside the cab is still pretty much work in progress i will be doing i've already got these seat covers but there's a place in south africa it's called takla seat covers and they've got the most amazing not only seat covers but seat covers and mats and that is what i'll be doing the front the back will stay i mean no need for me to go too much into the back the front i'll be doing takla seat covers with the mats i'm not sure if they do dash do this because this is nasty do this console yeah have everything done as much as possible with takla and then it will look snazzy that is a quick walk around i mean i could probably go on another half an hour but uh, it'll just be too much let me know what you think please do let me know what you think what i still need to do what's actually a priority is like i said is the rock sliders and diff breathers fortunately in namibia it's a dry country so i don't foresee any river crossings or any water whatsoever at the moment but that's definitely things that i want to do the canopy in the back is a bit of a mess it's better than it was a couple of months ago but it's still not where i want it inside the cab is a mess i wanted to fix that and then when everything is done shocks suspension again if you can advise on what I should do, what will last me for 10 years in Africa? What if I have problems in Africa, will I be able to get easy spares for? Which suspension will be easy to repair? These are the things I need to consider if, you, if you're packing up and uh, spending 10 years in Africa. So this is it. This is Frank, my Alex. I'm Nick from Namibia, and you've been watching 54 in Africa. Africa.